good year. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna start there. Oh, you got some tongs too. Okay. Ready. Anytime you're ready. Anytime. Okay, welcome to Tea and Tales, and our topic today is logging the old days. And they're, they're not so old because this is young fella here is going to try to fill in as best he can. But uh, before we start, I'd just like to draw your attention to some of the equipment on the side. This was donated by uh, an ex local resident, Joanne Nelly who came here, I think, in the 40s, after the stint in the Air Force, and he opened up Pemberton's first chainsaw business, and this was the mall dealership. And if you look at the pieces of equipment there, they look uh, somewhat intimidating, and they were, but when you think that these were half the size of the other power saws that they were packed around the bush, this again was a real deep forward. And it wasn't until the mid-50s that they really took the weight reduction seriously. And this model, this uh, yellow saw here, which was a McCulloch, was the saw that revolutionized the industry and uh, by what they call the direct drive uh, lightweight saws. And uh, one of the things that was interesting about these older saws is that they had to be held in one position before they uh, could run, because if you turn them sideways, the carburetors quit working and they stalled out. So they developed a pumping system for these saws and you could use them in any position until, until they got. And that's what we have uh, today. At any rate, Joanne Nelly donated all of this stuff. He, uh, these are some of the first saws that were power saws that were brought into Cameron. And unbeknownst to most people, Mall also had electric power tools, and those are some of the ones that uh, kept. What's this thing? That's a pair of tongs that uh, was attached to a donkey, it would hook onto a log and then wow. drag it, lift it into place. And the wrench? The wrench was for the big saw a blade on a nut, oh, yeah. tightening the, the main nut. Cool. And those tongs in the background. <clears throat> Or, that's for hauling ice out of the lake to oh. cool their drinks in the summer. Those are elbows. The elbows? Elbows. So, okay. But anyway, Bob Gilmore is our guest today and he uh, spent a lot of time in the valley here. I think he was born here. No, he wasn't. He was born until what? That was Richard. No, that's Richard. Moved here as a young lad and spent a lot of time in, his, in the bush. And when I went up to see him and uh, discuss the uh, 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 possibility of getting him to talk to you, we spent about an hour in the uh, mill shed just going over bits and pieces of permanent history. So he's got a, a whole lot of things to tell you. And so he's going to start, and then I will ask him some questions if he misses them. So, Bob, tell us about the early, the early days of logging in Bamberton and how you got into it and what your views are. Well, I showed up here in 1956. I was uh, 18 years old. I was supposed to be making a living in the slaughter. That didn't materialize, so I ended up going to a mill and the mill and the mill and Oh, okay. That work uh, there you are, okay. went into high heat logging for okay. the logs for the mills. That was the first time I seen any anything to do with logging. And that would be 1957. And that was uh oh, I your name. Please, sure. That was uh Hard McNally and Bill Brothers. They were in partnership then. And uh, Harvey got killed, so that was the first time I ever brought into anything like that. That was the first high lead I seen. Then from there, uh, I went to work into another mill, and then there was a fellow by the name of Monty Montgomery. And he told me that he had a contract falling for Empire Mills. And Empire Mills was, uh, they, they were bought out by Wellwood and Squamish uh, a year or so after. But the Empire Mills, they were working at Tisdale here, and he told me if I bought a power saw, I would fall in with him. 
and I never fell a tree in my life. I didn't know what a forest all looked like. So, uh, so more three hundred fifty dollars off debt. And that's how much power saw costs those things. Three hundred fifty bucks, and we could make. They paid us two dollars and fifty cents a day for them. By the time you pay, got them paid for, they were. Or they did smash it before. Well, but anyways, I went to work with Monty, and Monty put me on bucking with him, and I kind of worked there for a couple of days. He decided, well, I should go start falling. Well, I'm glad I was young and I could run. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was all hell breaking loose around there. But we eventually then it just continued on. And uh, we started, we were making telephone poles. And that was all contract, called telephone poles. There was, uh, I was working with Lex Ross, Bud Fraser, Bill Byers, just a whole bunch of us. And that was the first thing they did here more, more so than logging, was make poles, telephone poles. Work. They didn't have anything that was mechanical in those days, but peeling. And so we peeled them by hand, fell them, limbed them, and we got paid by the foot. It was all contract work. Uh, we could make about, we could make anywhere about $40 a day. In those days, that was big money. And we were getting six, five, six cents of work. I don't know how much work we were doing. We were going about, we were, we would make, oh, let's say we, we'd make uh, 10, 50 foot poles a day. And, uh, so, um, how many people? Doing that. You're doing falling in that made the pole, 10, 50 foot pole. By yourself? One person? Yeah, 500 feet. 500 feet. And, uh, and we would, uh, that was, I was working with Lexi then when we were doing that. And then when we peeled, sometimes you just straight peeled and you got a different price for that. We would, uh, we were up to 700 feet. And we got, Twenty years old mm -hmm. and money hungry. And we said, well, we fly at it. <laughs> no, we would go. But then, then we started other. Then I started working for other different companies. I worked for Cascade Fur, and I worked for. Uh, oh, I had all these names in my mind before I come here. But uh, <laughs> over the door. <laughs> but. Uh, Cascade Fur and, and Empire Mills, Wellwood. There were just so many different people that we worked for. And I did work on wooden, like under wooden trees. And usually what they did in uh, about <coughs> 1960, the steel spars started coming in and taking the place of wooden trees. And, but there were still 1010 Lawrence's around there with the yard machines. And they had great trees. And when we were, I worked with mostly uh, natives when we were rigging the rigging. And they were really good, good men in the, in the uh, rigging. And when logging first started here, it was just about all natives. There was hardly no whites. There was, the whites might be around the machine, and, but mostly natives. I could name you know, dozens of them at that work with the Phillips and Gabriel and the Williamses and the, Pascals, the Pascals were all fallers. It just, it just goes on and on. And uh, after, say, about 66, we, we started just to be 